Hello and welcome to the second film in the directed study for typography, Journalism and Media Arts 370. I'm Brett Erickson and this lesson concerns the measurements and the elements that make up those measurements within typography. In the past we've covered the history of typography and looking at the differences in the eras so far between the, uh, between the old style faces which included uh, faces like Bembo and Garamond, and we moved on then to, to the transitional type faces, which uh, include both Caslon and Baskerville, on to the modern era, which included Dido, um, and then finally on to the sans serif and, uh, and wood type eras that we saw in the late, in the mid 19th and uh, uh, century and beyond. Remember, most of sans serif and those wood type elements were brought on by the Industrial Revolution and the need uh, for fast production of, uh, of printed elements, and legibility became much more important for the large sizes at which people were printing. However, this lesson is concerned with the measurement and elements. So I'm going to move down a little bit here to move into our first part of the lesson. And remember, understanding measurement means we first must understand the pieces that make up the measurements that we use within typography. And these are measurement units that we've been using for a very long time. So they are designed to fit within the imperial system. Uh, they don't work very well with the metric system. You get a lot of um, partial uh, millimeter measurements and things of that nature. Um, however, that does fit very nicely within the imperial system. So if you take a look at this purple box that I have um, and look at the measurement arrows that I have on each side, you will notice that this is exactly one inch. Uh, and it will show up at the top, if you notice, uh, it will show up at the top that it's 0.9896 inches. And the reason it shows up as that is because um, there is a, uh, uh, as you'll see right here, a slight hairline. Um, rule around the edges, uh, the border around the edges is just meant to make it more discernible on the screen. If you remove that though, you would uh, in the end have, have a full one inch box, uh, one inch square. Now you'll also notice that this is set up to be exactly six pica. So if I click on it, that line is okay, 0.9878 inches again, and that is to make up for the pieces on the end, but it is six pica. And in fact, if I were to go up here and in the length enter in 6 pica, I would get exactly that same width of line again. The same would be true at the bottom. If I entered in 72 points, I would get the same length of line again. And here's why this is. Each pica has 12 points within it. Therefore, since this is 6 pica, 1 inch contains 6 picas, what I do then is I say, since each pica contains 12 points, I have a one inch box, therefore it is six picas. I take 12 times six, which results in 72 points for that measurement. And I give you evidence of this because here is a one pica box. There would be six of them that would fit within here. I then have six one point slides put right next to it. And you'll notice that those individual slides, if I were to have 12 of them, would equal exactly the height of that pica box. Six of them is exactly one half. So again, to review, one inch is equal to six pica, which is equal to 72 points. Okay. We move on to the second part of the lesson. These are 72 point typefaces, and the point of this part of the lesson is to show you that regardless of what the 72 points are, uh, you may have differing levels of space usage. And actually the, uh, the lines that I have right here are just a little bit too high. Um, these are bounding lines, and unfortunately the bounding lines, I set them just a bit too high. So I'm going to show you what they should look like. These should actually come down 
just slightly. So you'll notice that each one of these lines, although this is supposed to be the top level of any character within the, uh, within the typeface, you'll notice there's space. So there is space between the top of the capital and the bounding line itself, uh, and that is uh, very typical for typefaces. Um, you would not see that necessarily in hot lead. This G would butt down right at the bottom in a number of faces. Other faces you might actually have a little bit of lead left in here. But you will notice that even though they're both 72 point typefaces, and this is the critical point here, they're both 72 point typefaces, but they both behave differently. And there's a great degree of variation within typefaces themselves. And so even though we say a typeface is 72 points, uh, in no way does that mean that the two different 72 point typefaces will behave the same way on a page. We move down to the third diagram. And what you can see here is that, as I space this out just a little bit, You'll notice that this is another set of lines with, um, with just three letters on it again. And this actually breaks down the measurements in a much more detailed manner. Again, it is a 72 point, just that arrow, it is a 72 point typeface. So we do have a 72 point or one inch box here to show you that it truly is 72 points. Keep in mind also that an M space is the basic unit of measurement within every typeface, and that M space is determined by the point size of the typeface itself, not by the size of an M. That is a, a common mistake that new typographers make, that they assume that an M space is the size of an M. Actually, M's are almost never the size uh, of, an M, of an M space. Uh, if there's an exception to that rule, I'm not aware of it. Um, the M space is actually that square space that is 72 points on a side, if we, but if we were dealing with 36 point type, it would be 36 points on a side. Um, the M space is that unit of measurement, so it tells us how high the actual bounding box is for the typeface. Okay? It also informs some other measurements uh, that are ty uh, typographically determined, uh, such, as, um, such as the size of a dash. Okay? An N space is exactly one half the width of an M space. So since we're dealing with 72 point type here, 36 points is what the size of this N space would be. And again, that is not, uh, that's not the size of an N. However, it is used for, again, determining the measurements of other typographic elements. Okay. You can notice there's a lot of lines here. I have a top bounding line and a bottom bounding line, and these are the lines that the program uses actually to set how much space there is uh, for, uh, for the typeface itself, and again, that is exactly 72 points. You'll notice that the, the letters don't fill all 72 points, and that is intentional. So there's our bounding line. The cap line, or the capital height, you also hear it called cap height, is the line that delineates the tallest letter uh, within the, uh, uh, the majuscules within that typeface. Remember, a majuscule is a capital letter, and a minuscule is the lowercase letters. The cap line tells us essentially how high that letter is going to be. There are typefaces where we have something called an ascender line where things like the H may actually rise above the, the height of a capital letter. Uh, and that is, again, uh, based on which typeface you're working with. Some typefaces may not have that happen. Uh, other ones, uh, it's, it's a given uh, that that will be that that will be part of the character of the face itself. This line that shows the height of the lowercase letters is called the mean line. And the line at the bottom of those letters, okay, so if I were to type an X, I would have an X that would fit here perfectly. Uh, that is called the baseline, okay. 
the, the amount of distance between the baseline and the mean line is referred to as the x height. The x fits perfectly within there. And again, like I said above, many uh, x heights vary between typefaces. So it's important to realize that x height is not a static measurement. It, it, it varies uh, as much from font to font as it does from face to face and it does from person to person. The last line that we're going to discuss is the descender line and this is where letters like the G and the P and the Y will come down below the baseline and it is critical that we understand that the descender line figures in in some ways to how the typographic measurement is set uh, for what color the type looks like on the page. Uh, we are, are very interested in where those descenders end up on the page and how uh, whether or not they play nicely with the lines below them. And in, uh, in future lessons, we'll look at, uh, in part, how that helps determine some of the, uh, the leading decisions that we're going to make. Speaking of leading, I'm going to move on to what it means to have leading. And leading is determined, essentially, by looking at the height of the bounding box and then a certain number of points of space. It used to be, actually, lead blanks that were that were inserted uh, between the lines of type and that's why it again it was called leading they were um, pieces of lead that you put between lines and how we measure this is we measure from one baseline down to the next baseline so one here so I would measure from this baseline down to this baseline and what this is is it's 72 points and then an additional 12 points of leading. And it's very easy to see this. I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to snitch this square. And we're going to place this at the X. And now if I were to take an additional 12 points, I would be able to fit this within the specific size that was necessary. So in reality it's going to be exactly 84 points from here to here. And you can see that this is an exactly 84 point line. And I can show you up at the top here. This is 84 point. The line does not change. So I know for certain that that measurement does work. So 72 points of type 12 points of letting and how we refer to this then is we refer to it as essentially 72 on 84 and what this means is exactly as you see here 72 point type on 84 points total okay so you can also describe this and you will hear some uh, some typesetters talk about this in a different way which uh, at times um, you'll hear them talk about um, you may say 10 on 4 uh, if you've got 10 points plus 4 point you know 10 point type plus 4 points letting uh, but most of the time we will uh, we will discuss it and talk about it being 72 on 84 uh, we'll talk about it as 11 on 15 um, so it's the notion of how many points of letting do we need and uh, then that is added at that base measurement to whatever, how many points um, our typeface is itself. I hope that helps a little bit. Um, it is rather confusing for folks when they first start working with it and why leading is important. Remember, we use leading uh, in order to space out the page. We use uh, and, and give it the proper color, give the type the proper color. Moreover, we also look at things like X height and descenders to decide on what color the type will have on the page and how to properly make, uh, make that page uh, read well and uh, have the appropriate amount of legibility in, in uh, the display faces as well. So, again, um, this has been Professor Erickson, and this is um, the final portion for this second lesson in measurement uh, of typography.